so today we will start with linear algebra under that we will see an, a very important topic vector spaces so first we will see the definitions for the vector space so this is the formal definition for a vector space a vector space is a set of set v of objects called vectors on which we define two operations called addition and scalar multiplications have been defined satisfying the following properties if u v w are in v and if alpha and beta belongs to r or scalars then the sixth condition sorry all the ten conditions has to be satisfied so first one the sum u plus v is in v closure under addition closure and addition is commutative then addition is associative and uh, again there is a zero vector and again there exists a negative vector minus v and the scalar multiplication closure under scalar multiplication and seventh one alpha into u plus v equals to alpha u plus alpha v eighth alpha plus beta into v equal to alpha v plus beta v ninth alpha into beta v equal to alpha beta into v tenth one into v equal to v so these are the basic definition and here comes an example proving this definition so let v be the unit disk in r2 v we defined uh, like set of all x comma y which belongs to r 2 by 2 2 plus 2 where y2 less than or equals to 1 so we have to prove whether s if v is a vector space so the circle is not closed under scalar multiplication so if any one of the conditions is not satisfied under the definition then it is not a vector space so the circle is not closed under scalar multiplication so also you take that is proved here for example you take u is equal to 1 comma 0 which belongs to v and multiply by say alpha equal to 2 so now alpha u you will get 2 comma 0 which is not in v so the property 6 of the definition fails so this unit disk here we have drawn that diagram the unit disk is not a vector space here comes the subspace a vector space the definition let v be a vector space a subset w of v is called a subspace of v if it satisfies the following properties the zero vector of v is also in w w is closed in our addition that is if u and v are in w then u plus v is in w w is closed under scalar multiplication that is if u is in w and alpha is a scalar then alpha u is in w okay example let uh, is a here is a, an example for a subspace given here you observe we define a function f of x and we define a set w and we are checking whether w is a subspace of v here again if x is equals to 0 then y is equals to 2.2 into 0 you will get 0 again therefore 0 equal to 0 comma 0 is in w and next let u you consider u as a comma 2 comma 2a and v as b comma 2b be two elements of w then you add u and v u plus v equals to a comma 2a plus b comma 2b which is equals to a plus b comma 2a plus 2b which is equals to a plus b bar is that x comma 2 into a plus b so of all is there into x so because the x and y are components of u plus v it satisfies y is equals to 2x that u plus v is also inside w so thus w is closed general addition we have proved then you uh, consider any scalar alpha so u equals to a comma 2a be an element of w then alpha u you will get uh, a a comma a 2a sorry alpha a comma a 2 alpha 2a because the x and y components of alpha u satisfy y equals to 2x then alpha u is an element in w so thus y, w is closed under scalar multiplication also so all the three conditions of a subspace are satisfied so we can say that w is a subspace of v so here is a linear span of set so this is the main definition for linear span let v be a vector space and uh, yes. a subset w of v is called a subspace of v if it satisfies the following two conditions the zero vector of w v is also in w w is closed in an addition 
W is closed under scalar multiplication. So here is an another example for linear span set. So we will see that. Linear maps on vector spaces. Let T from V to U be a mapping of vector spaces and T is called a linear mapping. T into U plus V equals to T of U plus T of V and T into alpha V equal to alpha into T of V. Subsets of linear mapping is also mentioned here. So this is a general definition for subsets of linear mapping. So let T from V to U uh, be a linear mapping. The kernel of T is the set of vectors V in the domain V that get mapped to the zero vector. That is T V equals to zero subsets then here comes a theorem that shows that kernel t is a subspace of v and range of t is a subspace of u so it's also proved and mentioned here then null space null space definition is mentioned the null space of a matrix a belongs to m m into cross n so it's denoted as null a Null space definition is a subset of R consisting of vectors such that A V equals to 0. Linear independence. Linear independence is also mentioned here. So be a set of vectors. You consider a set of vectors V1, V2, etc. Vp and V1, V2, etc. Vp is linearly independent if only scalars C1, C2, etc. Cp. When you multiply the vectors with scalars, you, you add, when you add, you will get 0. C1, V plus C2, V, C2, V2 plus etc. C, V, C, P, V, P equal to 0. So, then we say that they are linearly independent. So, these are the examples for linearly independent and dependent vectors. Basis, another important definition in vector. Basis a set of vectors B which is equals to V1 etc. Vk in W is said to be a basis for W if A the set B spans all of W that is W equal to span of V1 V2 etc. Vk. Here the dimension of vector space is mentioned. Dimension dim V is nothing but number of vectors in any basis of V. So thank you for this opportunity. Thank you so much.